All right, welcome, ladies and gerbils, back to the boss map. So it's been a, a little while now. I believe it's day five here, has just dawned about an hour and a half ago. And uh, I haven't really cast much since then because, you know, not a lot big has changed. But what we're going to do today, <clears throat> just to keep things rolling, is that we're going to have a newspaper day. Um, we're going to look at who's at war with whom. And we're also going to look at uh, the latest hotbed of military activity. So right now I've got it on what I call clown quilt mode. Um, I prefer relations mode when I'm playing. Uh, this is just a little too much for me. I like to know who my allies are and who I'm actively at war with. So I use that other mode. But today we're going to use a mode that a friend of mine, Benaya, who is actually casting this game as well. I encourage you to go over and check him out. Um, if you go to YouTube and look up Mighty Benaya, you will find him. And uh, today we're going to go into his favorite mode, which is morale mode. He likes this because it does show where that recent military activity is. It also helps you to keep an eye on your own morale, what's going on within your own country. And he could probably speak to that better than I, because I don't use this uh, I use this map, which you might call um, diagnostically, but I don't run my game on it, where I, I believe he actually runs his game on it. So we're going to begin with an overview here and note where most recent military activity is. And you can pretty much depend on this, this mode of map uh, to give you a good idea of that, because obviously recently conquered territories, uh, places where you, people are at war, that's where they're going to start to suffer that morale hit. So we can see right away up here in... Uh, sort of the central Russian plains here. Something's going on here. Looks like it's likely between uh, Russian Arkhangelsk and potentially an AI here, Russian Perm. So maybe he's attacking an AI. We're going to dig into this a little bit deeper. Russian Empire looks like it's got some red down here. Potentially some uh, recently captured territory. That's usually what that red means. Um, we see some deep red here with this AI, so he is being attacked most likely. We have another AI that's that's showing some suffering here. Not sure exactly if that's military or uh, otherwise, but we see some serious red here in French West Africa. Again, this is a good mode just to kind of look over the map and see where is war happening. Um, we did know that Lord Wolf was under attack. It looks like he has managed that attack. Uh, it looks to me like Chile has spread east here, um, doing a good job of holding down the fort down there. Again, we will look at the newspaper for more specific details. Over here, it does look like Ken Oath in the California Republic is clashing potentially with this AI. But also we see some red down here, which means he could be, uh, he could be at war with, uh, oh, Texas looks like he's... Uh, He's suffering too, so I would almost bet that California and Texas are at war here. Um, a lot of it looks like a lot of AI being sort of gobbled up. Now we see, I think it's pretty safe to say the most conflicted part of the world right now is Australia. So those sons of bitches down under are going at it. You can tell there are several, it looks like four or five countries here engaged, including some AI here. Uh, Oh, that's not an AI. British New Zealand. Ouch. Ouch, my friend. British New Zealand is almost gone. Uh, Dutch East India not looking great either. So it does look like the smooth criminal here, and we all recognize him from the newspaper with his 45-degree Michael Jacksons uh, over here in Northern Territories. Uh, they do like look like they are part of um, opposing coalitions here. One is the United Isles. The other is... Uh, pirates of Australia. Oh, that's right. And there is an ongoing battle about who really are the pirates here. And uh, so uh, we'll find out more about that as we as the time goes on, folks. But uh, if you look at the if you look at the opposing pirate uh, <laughs> claims, um, you will see that the pirates here are Mexico, United Latin American and C Caribbean Island, Caribbean Island, Caribbean Island. I don't know. You tell me. Um, and then we had another the Pirates of Australia here, and uh, and they're fighting as well. Now, here's one thing that I I don't I hate to throw this in the mix, but uh, where does Piratini come into this? There's an actual country called Piratini, and they may be the piratest of all. I don't know because it's literally in their name. So that's something to think about, right? Let's take a look at the newspaper here. 
see what's going on here. A lot of back and forth uh, about Polish men with pants off. I don't know why when they're drinking, uh, you know, doesn't wear pants. They're talking about Winnie the Pooh, definitely doesn't wear pants. We all know that. Uh, you know, I just don't know. We're talking about Tom and Jerry. A lot of stuff going on here in the paper. Uh, it looks like Mr. Nixon tried to drop an atomic bomb, what, 40 years before, <laughs> 50 years before an atomic bomb existed. I don't know. It seems a little shady to me. Uh, again, you're welcome to come and look at the chatter here. It seems like there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, a little bit of fun in the papers doesn't bother me. There is some penis talk going on. I'm not really sure why. Uh, Cucumber Kingdom, you know, I don't know. A little bit of uh, uh, ding dong talk there. I don't know if it's necessary, folks. Uh, Chile is talking here uh, about, hmm, okay. Don't know what that means, but I think he's talking about how he's destroying nations down there. It looked like he was running rampant. We have an entire pirate song here. So you can see the, uh, oh, here it is. Here's the Republic of Piratini. So Piratini, where are you, buddy? So he is, uh, he's part of the, uh, what's the name? American Empire. Okay, so, uh, but but you can see in the paper there, he is actually, uh, I think he's jumped into the pirate fray. I think we now have three contenders about who are the real pirates. And, uh, you know, Piratini, that's, his, that's the name of his republic. So it seems like he has a boost there. Um, down here we have another, oh boy, another pirate song. <laughs> That's just great. Ontario's talking about barbecue. What the, I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's giving d directions on how to give a barbecue. You know, okay, this is, there's a 45 degree Michael Jackson I was talking about. I'm not sure, is that actually, is that actually the guy who we were referring to? I don't know. New South Wales, uh, talking about barbecue, cheese. And uh, yeah, I'm not a crook, Richard Nixon. Um, Anti-yoism, <laughs> anti you know, a lot of interesting stuff in the paper here, but we really need to get down to the nitty gritty here, folks. So here's where we're gonna talk about who is at war with whom. And this is pretty important stuff. So we see, first of all, one of the most uh, devastating engagements on the map so far is uh, Ireland versus England. 58,000 dead, 58 infantry dead from one, 46 from the other. When you think about the fact that we all start with eight nation, uh, eight states rather, and 10 in each state, we all have a starting place of about 80. And then of course we develop troops over, over the days. But just talking about that baseline of 80, um, you got people who are down below half of their original number of troops. Now, again, with newly spawned troops, that's not exactly accurate, but at least it's an idea of how we can think about that. It's a pretty big war going on right now between traditional enemies, Ireland and England. Um, really a lot of blood being shed there. Now we have what we were talking about down there in Australia, Northern Territories versus Western Australia. And that appears to be quite the dust up down there. Um, although those aren't high, high numbers. Um, they're still significant. You know, there's there's still a decent amount of death going on there. 31,000 versus 3,300. Um, if it's just declared war, I'm not really thinking about it. I'm not considering. I'm looking at, at casualties here. British New uh, Zealand and New South Wales, again, down in Australia. Some minor skirmishes here with only a few thousand lost on each side. Uh, this is pretty significant. British Madras, uh, British Bengal. Um, those are decent numbers. 23,000 versus 3,600. So there's a war waging there. Um, we have United Republic... <laughs> Whoa, United Republic of Guyana versus United States of Brazil happening here uh, down there in South America. Not serious casualties, but that's a war, all right. We have Chile versus Argentina. This is one of the most bloody wars uh, that I recorded here in my notebook. That's, that's pretty big. And we did talk about Chile, who is Lord Wolf, um, getting the best of Argentina and, and also expanding significantly into the map down there. That's what we saw from our red map, from our morale map, uh, from space there. We have a lot of wars going on now. Now, keep in mind, a lot of these are with, uh, you know, AI. But we have British West Egypt versus French Equatorial Africa, the Chinese Empire versus uh, British Burma. We're going to come back to that a little bit later because British Burma is also at war uh, with other countries on the map. So we'll come back to that later. Um, here we have 
uh, another war here, California Republic versus Texas. We noted that from outer space. I believe Texas is an AI, and it looks like California has almost completely swallowed Texas at this point. Um, we have the continued war here. Uh, this is now Ireland versus Scotland. So we're going to hearken back to the fact that we saw earlier that Ireland was also at war with Britain. So that means Ireland is hurting bad, uh, hemorrhaging a lot of troops and at a war with two countries, which is never great uh, if you're in that situation. Now, we see a lot of fatalities here. This is Dutch East India versus Western Australia. So once again, we're looking at Australia. We're seeing a lot of casualties going down. Um, don't forget West Australia. Um, was already, we noticed, was already at war with North and, uh, Northern Territories. So I have the total losses from Western Australia at 33 and 48. So, oh gosh, 81. <clears throat> so that's almost all of his troops, folks. Uh, that's all of his initial troops and uh, and then some, uh, some that have spawned. So he probably has very, very little left. Um, it looks like uh, West Australia has fought a good war against Dutch East India, but he's also at war, as we mentioned, with Northern Territories, and that's going to hurt. Uh, I think we might have seen the last of uh, Dustern, <laughs> Dustern <laughs> Australia, uh, of Western Australia. So uh, don't want to put the nail in the coffin too soon because you never know what will happen, but it doesn't look good. Um, we have, uh, this is never going to happen, <laughs> Japanese Jushno Sachalinsk versus Russian Yakutia. And it looks like a pretty even war there. Doesn't look like anybody's getting a strong advantage there. That's probably what we were looking at in central. No, because it should be northeastern, uh, right? Because Yakutia is all the way in the northeast of uh, the Asian continent. So uh, we might look again from from uh, the satellite view. But again, not huge casualties anyway. Not, not like some of these we're seeing. We see Je uh, German Manus versus Papua New Guinea. So that's happening in the islands outside of Australia. A lot of conflict going on in Australia, as we mentioned. So California Republic is also at war with Vancouver. So we mentioned before California Republic was at war with Texas, is at war with Texas, but also uh, looks like attacking into Vancouver as well. Um, we see peace being called, so I'm not really going to concern myself with that. I'm mainly looking at uh, conflicts that have major uh, casualties. Here we have Russian Perm versus Russian Archangelinsk, and of significant casualties there. Again, that's happening in Central Asia, Central Northern Asia. Um, down here, we have a lot of casualties. This is from the Republican uh, Philippine Moro versus the American Philippines. So massive, massive casualties against the American Philippines. That is not good. That is a good three-fourths of their initial total uh, total count of uh, troops and really surprising, uh, almost two to one this early in the game. That's very surprising to see this kind of slanted, uh, losses. So my take on this would be, it almost has to be that the American Philippines attacked into forts against Philippine Moro. That's all I can understand these usually this early in the game. You don't see that kind of, uh, grossly slanted casualties, uh, you know, before artillery hit the map. So it's gotta be, uh, Philippines just screwed the pooch on that one. Not great. Attacked into forts, almost certainly. We have Chinese Yuna versus Ch uh, British Burma. Uh, I want to say British Burma is already at war. Let me check my notes here. Yes, uh, with the Chinese Empire. Uh, but so far, British Burma total casualties are only at about 16,000. So not terrible. Uh, in fact, Chinese Yuna is probably a AI. Not sure about that. But again, you never like to have two fronts. So British Burma hurting in the respect, at least, that he's having to fight two different enemies at the same time. So here we have Chinese Yunnan uh, and the Chinese Empire. So we just got through seeing that Chinese Yunnan is at war with British Burma. They are also at war with the Chinese Empire. Uh, so again, two enemies is never great. Going down here to Fiji and British New Zealand, those are again islands around Australia. Minor, minor casualties so far. Not even really sure how something like that happens on that small of a scale. Now, this is huge. This is, I think, the most bloody war we've seen so far. Uh, I'm surprised to see this much war, honestly, this early in the game. Uh, it seems like kind of a noob play to engage in massive, massive wars uh, before day five is even completed. But it is what it is. Um, we have Re Republic of Upper Volta here with 80,000 casualties. And down here against West Africa with 53, again, leading me to believe that potentially 
Volta was attacking into forts. I don't know, but they're almost gone, right? I mean, if you we started with eighty thousand troops, period, and so you know a lot have spawned over five days, but not not a ton. Like what? Another eight to ten have spawned on top of that. So I would say Republic of Upper Volta is just about gone at this point, um, pretty much decimated. Um, one more we do see here, if I recall, I looked over this beforehand. Uh, so we have South Australia and New South Wales. So let me see, I believe I put this. Yeah, South Australia versus New South Wales. Um, bringing into mind that uh, New South Wales is also at war with British New Zealand. Uh, New South Wales has a total casualty now. If we look at this 32 here, uh, New South Wales had lost three versus British New Zealand. So just 35, not a huge uh, hit. But again, you know, even if you take 30,000, that's, you know, that's about a third of what you have. That's, it's not good this early in the game. Uh, and, and sometimes you get attacked and there's nothing you can do about it. A noob attacks you and, and that's all there is to it. I was keeping an eye out in this map. This is day four. I was keeping an eye out for any harbors uh, because a harbor built before day five means a gold rushed, a gold mark rushed harbor. And I didn't see any. So it looks to me like at least for the most part, people are are fairly chill about gold marking. Uh, you know, people do tend to gold mark units. Uh, so, you know, it's hard to police that. But, uh, you know, I can't look at that on the map, but I can certainly see if things appear before they normally should. I can call gold mark abuse. And I haven't seen that in terms of buildings made. Uh, we can see Oregon versus the California Republic here. Don't forget the California Republic was already at war uh, with Texas. And did we say another one? Uh, I believe it was Texas and one other. I'm checking over my notes here. Uh, yeah, Vancouver. So California Republic is at war with three different uh, countries, and that's not great. Uh, it looks like casualties uh, versus Vancouver were 6,000, and casualties uh, <laughs> versus Texas were 18. So, yeah, th this is getting significant now. That's about 40 40 to 50, yeah, about 50,000 casualties from California. Not, not a great start to a powerful, powerful game with a lot of high-level players in it. Okay, so we're now kind of, it uh, looks like we're past a lot of these wars. We see that war has been declared here, but again, without huge casualties, I'm not going to concern myself with it. This is something sad to see, Wales versus the Kingdom of England. Um, those countries have not been at war since the Middle Ages, it seems like, right? Uh, but they are at war now. It looks like Wales is getting whaled on <laughs> by the Kingdom of England. Don't forget, though, England is also at war with Ireland. So England with 13,000 casualties here uh, in their war against Ireland. Uh, I believe they had uh, another significant amount. Uh, and then, of course, Ireland. Ireland is at war with Scotland. Uh, so a lot of war happening on the British Isles right now. A lot of casualties, a lot of death happening just on that one little piece of uh, real estate there. Okay, and this is the last one that I have recorded in my notes here. Uh, Piratini is at war with Argentini. <laughs> so uh, this this guy, he claims to be uh, one of the original pirates, and I believe him because it's in his name, is at war with Argentina. That's not great, although they haven't lost a lot of troops. It's just never good to be at war this early. We, we looked at that morale uh, you take a hit on morale early and then just keep on taking a hit on it. 5% every day uh, to every territory that, you know, that as long as you're at war and then don't forget being neighboring to territories also hurts your morale. So uh, just not a good look to be at war this early unless you're going, if you're going to war with an AI, I get it. But a lot of us try to keep high popularity deep into the game uh, for the whole market system to keep our prices lower. So again, not a big fan of going to war, but there is a lot of war on this map. Let's take one minute to look at the mightiest armies. This early in the game, there's not a huge margin, as you can see, 1.07 versus 1.03. A lot of people right around the 1% mark here, most of these at the 1% 1, 1 mark. But Ontario showing a market, uh, that's a lot more than most of the others here. So Ontario is doing something right and or potentially um, building a lot of uh, armored cars and and not losing a lot of troops at the same time, armored cars or cavalry. So uh, world's mightiest armies, we want to go ahead and see the most popular nations. 
uh, our Kurdish friend here, Lalo Kurd, is the first and most popular of all. Korean Empire, United States of America, German Tanzania, Canada, and Russian Yakutia um, are all the most popular here. These are the people who are going to get those good market prices from all the AI. Watching that popularity, it's a very important thing. Um, down into the spies here, we see that we're, we're seeing some uh, destruction going on in northern Rhodesia, significant amount of destruction. Uh, they need to be employing some defensive spies, it looks like, in northern Rhodesia. And now, surprising here, um, our rebellions. We have uh, two rebellions already in this game, meaning low popularity forcing, uh, forcing territories to rebel over to another player. So very, very interesting. Uh, join the German Empire and over here join the Ukrainian state. So uh, these two gain territories for free. I'm sure they ha they're they happy to have them. Um, I did want to mention the coup d'etats coup d'etats here. There are three of them. So uh, A Infinity has left the game and is now AI. Uh, Retardo da Vinci has left the game, is now AI. And now, of course, they can return at any time. And then this is the irony of all ironies. Here we go. Went. <laughs> he He went and went. He left. There, there he went. Here we go is now there he went. <laughs> All right. That's it, guys. Uh, thanks for checking in. Uh, just a little something to keep the game current and interesting. Again, I've eliminated all infantry and uh, units from this map so we can just look at it. I think when we examine this map in the future, when I do it in real time like this is right now, um, I'm just going to do this kind of map. And this is the kind of map that anybody can use and anybody can see. So I'm not giving away any secret information. It is nice to be able to re release games in real time. Uh, there's something a little weird about trying to watch a game seven days old. You already know what happened in your region. Maybe you can learn a little bit about what's going on elsewhere. But I prefer this uh, current method. So unless somebody has an objection, I'm just going to continue to do real uh, real time games with zero information shared uh, other than what you can freely obtain uh, in the newspaper or uh, via map views. So that's the plan for now. If you have an objection to that, please let me know. As I mentioned in a previous video, people have been pretty cool about reaching out to me with concerns. And believe me, I'm not going to be an asshole and just be like, oh, fuck you, I'm doing what I want. You know, like I'm, I'm a part of this community. I respect this community. I love this game. Um, I think in general, most people uh, who play this game are pretty top-notch people. Um, they're intelligent, they're patient, and you know, overall, a great group of people as far as that's been my experience so far. So if you have any issues with what I'm doing here, or if something uh, is uh, poking you the wrong way, or you feel like I'm sharing information that I shouldn't be sharing, please let me know. Uh, you can either uh, comment in the video comments below, or you can uh, direct message me via Discord. Um, always happy to hear input, uh, whether it's positive or critical or whatever. It's just nice to have uh, that community uh, communication going on. So that's it, guys. Thanks for checking in. As always, love to have you on board. Um, be sure to go ahead and spank that like button. And I'd say go ahead and subscribe too, because um, when we have events, I've already had some people asking about, are we going to do another specialist game, that Nerf, Surf, and Turf, where uh, it's teams of three. One person is land, one person is navy, one person is air. You can only build those units and you have to coordinate with each other to dominate. And I'm starting to think, yeah, we're going to do that again. Um, we did our horse force, but the horse force kind of lost some steam um, because it's very, it's pretty one dimensional. We just all build horses and then we took over the map. Then once we took over the map, it was like, well, what do we do now? And so basically it's been people going AI and then the rest of us attacking the AIs and taking over their territory. So I'm going to see that game through to the end. But um, the Nerf Surf and Turf game had a lot of engagement. People were very active, very actively engaged. And the way we did it was each of the 10 teams, it was a 31 player map, each of the 10 teams had their own Discord channel so they could privately talk and, and plan strategy. I was the 31st player and I was neutral. And I was also able to do fun things. I spent gold marks to make it happen, but it didn't bother me. I was happy to do it. Um, I was able to do things like challenges. Um, I had people try to find the, f I was Norway in this game. So I hid uh, Norwegian fishermen around the board and whoever found them i would give them uh two gold mark speed speed ups on any building they wanted and say like uh, fifty thousand fish or something like that i just had different rewards that i would give and so it was a lot of fun there was a lot of engagement people were very engaged and so um i'd say definitely subscribe if you wouldn't mind because that's how i advertise coming games like that i'll just put out a video um, I do believe we are going to do another Nerf Surf and Turf here coming up soon. Um, now that the holiday season is over and my tournament is winding down uh, that I'm in, I think I can give a lot more attention to that. So 
Again, uh, go ahead and spank the like button. That makes us uh, more prominent out there, more likely for people to stumble on these videos and join our community. And then, of course, go ahead and subscribe so that you can get that notification of when these specialty games are coming up. All right, that's about it, guys. As always, thanks for checking in. It's good to have you with us. Adios, amigos.